It's time to start the show. Yeah, it's time to start the show. Off the top rope, four figure leg lock. Ric Flair with the chest chop. Hater is wonder why I never tap out. A young king like the Marcus. Undertaker with a coffin. Choke slam so often. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Man, the boy keep flossing. Man, the boy keep talking. I'm with David. I'm this is wrestling and with things. Say. And if you like to wrestle and with all sorts to of topics it's not the show. on all things sports and entertainment, entertainment and sports, do not forget to at wrestling with things for all sorts of video content and new episodes in the sports world we must discover some good work throughout this chaos we got a chance to discover some goodness and some good piece of writing today joining us on the show live from new york lavi margolin hopefully i said that right lavi how are you doing today thank you for joining us on the show hey guys i'm doing great how are you we're doing awesome, man. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. We we know you've been busy with promoting your book, and we're gonna let's talk about your book. You have wrote a book. You're here to talk about your book, Trump Mania. It is essentially the relationship between Donald Trump and Vince McMahon, and how that has affected our president today. So I gotta ask you first, Lavi, what inspired you? to write this book specifically about Donald Trump and his relationship to professional wrestling. Thank you. Um, it was a couple of things. One of them was um, during Trump's campaign, it was impossible to miss a lot of the references or uh, the training that he might have received by being part of WWE at certain points. Um, the way he would uh, debate and assign silly catchphrases or names to some of his opponents. Um, things that really stuck was um, lock her up with Hillary or um, Lion Ted, uh, Little Marco. Um, it really seemed like something simple that uh, viewers could catch on to and uh, that, that he had trained for. So that really... Uh, was something that I looked on with fascination at first and amusement. But as it uh, got closer to election and election night, it was uh, fear. Um, it was upsetting. But um, in speaking to a friend about some book projects I had in mind, I had thought of this as a smaller project and just mentioned one day I might write about Trump and wrestling because I think there's a good deal of information there. And he was so excited that it got me excited. And when I started looking more and more into it, I was surprised at how much information there was. Yeah, I mean, so was I. And and it's so funny that you actually wrote a book because as soon as Donald Trump became a presidential candidate, the first thing that came into my mind was WrestleMania 23, Battle of the Billionaires, Bobby Lashley representing Donald Trump versus you know, Vince McMahon and Umaga. And, and it's so funny that our president, his feet in his footprint in the world of professional wrestling, because people like you and I all share that love of professional wrestling. And I have to ask you also, I, I, you were at Raw 25, correct? Oh yeah, I was, at, I was there on Monday night. Thankfully, I was at the Barclays Center because I heard it didn't go as well at the Manhattan <laughs> Center. Yeah, there was a lot of complaints about the, in the other venue, but how did you like the show? What, t tell me some of your takeaways from that show overall. It was fun. Um, you know, I used to be uh, a super fan, um, I would say, about from about 30 years ago, about the time the book started, from 88 till 92, Lost it for a couple of years, picked it back up, and was a super fan through like 2000. Um, the last 15, 20 years, I've been following closely, but I haven't gotten into it as much anymore. I think everyone has sort of that time period, but I can always go and enjoy it. I like the live shows more than watching on TV. So it was just fun to be there. Um, when I first got in the building, the crowd was really hyped to be there. Um, it seemed like a lot of people that hadn't been watching as closely that were dressed up like from the Attitude Area. There was uh, four big guys and they were each dressed like a DX member. Um, they were a little disappointed that DX was in the Manhattan Center, 
but it was just fun to be there. Um, since I don't go that often, I try and get a good seat. Uh, the best part was definitely uh, Austin and McMahon interacting. Um, with up a little bit. What was that last point? Oh, the best part was the opening segment where McMahon and Austin um, had uh, one of those retro moments. Actually, now there was a little bit of difficulties. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, yeah. At, going back to the book a little bit, um, going on with Trump in his presidency and sort of the comments that he's usually saying. So can you see, you know, Vince McMahon doing any type of business or doing any type of bringing him in for any type of wrestling angles in the future, despite all the negativity going around him? Uh, I think they're smartly avoiding him right now. Um, one of the things that came up recently was a sizzle reel uh, for the media in promoting Raw 25. Um, they had a few different uh, two-minute clips where they would show different celebrities. And somebody had asked um, Triple H and Stephanie, hey, I don't see uh, Trump on this reel. And they were careful to say that you know they're accepting of all different people. And by the way, even President Obama isn't on the uh, reel as well. So they were just trying to stay away from politics. Um, I think one day I could definitely see Trump returning out of WrestleMania many years from now. Yeah, yeah. I could probably see the same thing. I agree 100%. I yeah. think they're cleverly avoiding any sort of history he has. They have a lot of family-friendly sponsors and, and a, lot of, a lot of kid sponsors. Yeah, I have to add this point. Why don't? Why didn't they react the same way towards Trump's negative, you know, kind of racist comments? The same way they reacted to Hogan's. That's kind of a question to both. Your thoughts? I think, sure. Um, I think uh, with Hogan, it was easy to sort of disassociate themselves very quickly because. Um, you know, what was Hogan doing with them? Not much at the time. But with Trump, I believe um, once those comments started coming out stronger, Linda McMahon was going to be up for a position, which she ultimately got through the Small Business Administration. So they sort of liked being associated with him, but um, they were a little bit cautious when those comments came out as well. So there had been word that there was um, a gag order that they didn't want anyone in the company really talking about Trump at all. Oh, wow. That, that seems We're learning. Insightful. It's very insightful. Thank you for that piece of information. Let's switch gears. The company has built around him in recent memory. And you look at the past top guys, top baby faces. You had Stone Cold, who was in the perfect era where it's his boss and sticking middle fingers. And then before him, you had Hulk Hogan and Bruno San Marantino. When you see Roman Reigns, do you see top guy? Do you see face of the company? What do you um, think of him? I hadn't been as negative about him as, as some people had that I noticed. Um, uh, when he was in the Shield as part of the, the group of three, I thought that was an amazing group and they broke them up way too soon. I had seen Dean Ambrose as, in his original character, is really unique, um, a cross between uh, Roddy Piper and Terry Funk, somebody that really pulled out um, from the screen and grabbed you and captured your interest. They were perfect group together. So when they broke them up and gave Roman Reigns some momentum, I was, you know, could follow that. But it just seems after years that when you look back on top stars, they're not built that way. It's very hard to keep pushing someone down the fans' throats and for them to catch on. Sometimes they've done that and it might take six months or a year, but after years, unless there's a complete change in the character or the direction, it's very hard to eventually get there. One, one thing I got to ask, you was at the Raw 25, and despite not seeing Undertaker for quite a year, and he just comes in and says one sentence and kind of just, you know, storms off. All right, and lastly and finally, I'll end with this. Um, when people read Trump Mania, your book, which is really well written, really objective, I like how it, it is very rare to find someone in 2018 
completely objective about Donald Trump. And I like how you took a, a real objective, consistent approach in this book to map out, you know, his success in the real estate and reality TV industry. So I'll end with this, Lavi. What do you want readers before picking up this book to read? What do you hope they get from the book by the time they're done with it? Um, uh, two things. Uh, one is I want them to understand um, something that really helped to shape the president, to understand his perspective when he was exposed to, um, you know, almost cartoonish depictions of good versus evil and patriotism and ways of portraying others that are memorable. And, and when we see him utilizing up, these terms and these strategies over Twitter, we sometimes today, we Marcus. think there's something wrong with him, which I might show. not disagree with. But yeah. other times we have to remember that this type show. of approach comes the from the world four of four wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second thing the I'd like people to know hey, is to understand the relationship like the that he has with Vince and Linda coffee. McMahon. I think Choke that's a, so a fascinating story. Stone Cold Steve and Austin. it's very Make interesting to see Lawson. moving forward the um, with the McMahons and with Trump politically. I'm and I got something to say. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Bobby. We really Let's appreciate you taking the time to, you know, give us that insight. We learned a, a lot from you. And to our audience, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Wrestling With Things. Have a good night, Bobby. Thanks, guys. Thank you.